So yesterday we were looking at Riemann sums, and the thing that made Riemann sums uh, different from the sums that we did before is that the interval can be can uh, have different distance. The delta x can be different. That's right. The delta x could be different for each part of the interval or each partition, we could call it. Um, now the thing with that is. You know, we saw there, you know, coming up with what, you know, in the one example it was i squared over n squared. The other example it was 3i squared over n squared. And that's because we had a square root function. But here, here we have the integral from negative 2 to 4 of 4 minus 2x. Well, that's just a line. It's just a normal function. And the reason why I wanted to look at this one here is because of the little comment I put over on the right-hand side here. Let's zoom in on that. With Riemann sums, we don't have to have the equal widths. However, the fact that you don't have to use equal widths doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't. In fact, the only time we need to use different widths is when we can't get the sums down to something with an i or an i squared or an i cubed. Okay? Like when we had the square root of x yesterday. We got that down. If we would have tried it with equal widths, we would have gotten down to just something like the square root of i. And we don't have a formula for the sum of the square roots of i. We don't know how to find that sum. So we wouldn't have been able to actually figure out the result. But by using i squared over n squared, then we square rooted it and we had just a plain i and an i squared and stuff. And we were able to actually do things that we had the formula for. Okay? So in this case right here, you'll notice we have our Riemann sum there. The limit as the norm goes to 0 of the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of c sub i delta x sub i, we don't have to use that here. We can actually, because this is linear, um, and, be, and really more, more specifically because this is just a function that's going to work out, we can use equal widths. Okay? So the integral from a to b of f of x dx is going to be that limit of the sum, just like what we've been doing, okay? Now, looking at this integral here, what is the interval that we're integrating over? A to B. A to B, okay, so that is what in this case? Six. Um, Negative, two. Negative two to four, which has a, a width of six. Okay, so that b minus a part is 6. So I'm going to have 6 over n here. And I'm going to be taking f of negative 2 plus 6i over n. Okay? And again, this is the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of all of that. Now, on the quiz, this is one other thing that I saw a couple of people do, so I want to warn you against this. There were a couple of people who took this and distributed it right now. Why can we not do that? They took this 6 over n and distributed it into here. But that's yeah, that's inside a function. That's not just f times something times 6 over n. Those things are inside a function. So I need to evaluate the function first. Then I could distribute if I want. Okay? So let's go ahead and find out what is f of negative 2 plus 6i over n. Well, the function is 4 minus 2x. So I'm going to do 4 minus 2 times negative 2 plus 6i over n. So we have 4 plus 4, 
minus 12i over n. So that, of course, is 8 minus 12i over n. Okay? So now I can come back here, and right here I've got a 8 minus 12i over n. That's times 6 over n, and that's what I'm taking the limit of the sum of. Okay? Now, like Harrison asked earlier, can we just take the 6 over n out right now? Sure. Could we distribute it now? Sure. Which should you do? Whichever one you want. Okay? It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and just distribute it. So limit as n approaches infinity of the sum i equals 1 to n of 48 over n minus 72 i over n squared. So now notice we're taking the sum of both of these. The first one is a constant, right? So what's that sum equal to? Just 48, yeah, because it's 48 over n times n. So that's going to be just 48. Then we got to subtract something. All right. Now, the 72 over n squared is a constant. But I have the sum of the i's. What's the sum of the i's? There we go. n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay? So n times n plus 1 over 2. And that we need to simplify a little bit. That's a 72n squared plus 72n all over 2n squared. Now, could we simplify that more? Sure. Do we have to? No because we're just taking the limit as n approaches infinity now. Okay, so what's the limit of 48? 48. What's the limit of... There we go, it's gonna be minus 36. So minus 72 over two is a minus 36. So this whole thing just equals 12. Okay? So, a good example of the fact that just because you can use different width intervals, we only want to complicate things when we have to. All right. So, is there a way we could do it with different width intervals and it might work? Yeah, probably. But why bother? Okay. We don't have to. Okay. So, Now we can take a minute and kind of step back a little mentally and deal with something that's actually a little bit more simple, okay? Let's consider here, I don't have it on there. Let's consider that we had a shape that, uh, oh, it's not do multiple at a time. Let's say it looks something like this. Okay. And let's say that I asked you to find the area of this thing. How would you do that? Yeah, cut, 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 you know. We cut the cut the top off. We got a triangle, right? And maybe we cut this all the way along here. So we now, we, now we have uh, a triangle and two little rectangles. Okay? And then we just add them up, right? 
This was, if you took geometry, you know, the area addition postulate. You know, a fancy thing for just chop it up and add up all the pieces. Okay? So we had this little area, this area, and this area. And the area of the whole thing was just those three added up. Okay? You might say, well, why in the world are we talking about this? Well, we're talking about this because this actually, this rule applies to integrals as well. Okay? And this is what's known as the additive interval property. Okay? Now, let's, let's look at intervals geometrically first, and then we'll see actually the additive property too. Okay? So here, here we have the integral from 1 to 3 of 4 dx. Well, y equals 4 is just a horizontal line, right? So if I'm taking the integral, that's the area below. So I've got this horizontal line at 4. I've got the x-axis down at the bottom. And then I've got x equals 1 and x equals 3. Well, how am I going to find the area of that? Yeah, base times height. It's just a rectangle, right? So I've got... 2 down here, and it's 4 units tall, so my area is 2 times 4, or 8, okay? Now, what is the integral from 1 to 3 of 4 dx equal? 8. 8, okay? Remember, integrals are simply area under a curve. They say from 1 to 3 of 4. Did I say 1 to 4? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, from 1 to 3 of 4. Okay. So the area under the curve is just 8. Okay? And this is actually a good, a good thing to see. If you have an integral that you're supposed to find, and you've graphed it or something, or you see the graph there, and it's something that you could just use a geometry formula to find instead of calculus, do the geometry, okay? For example, next uh, here we have the integral from 0 to 3 of x plus 2. Well, x plus 2 is this line right here, okay? Now we have the part of it that goes from 0 to 3, and then we have the x-axis down here. Well, what shape is this? It's a trapezoid, okay? It's a trapezoid, or trapezium, if you're an IV, um, or British system. Uh, so how do we find the area of a trapezoid? Base 1 times base 2, or base 1 plus base 2 overhead times height. Times height over 2. Over two. Yeah. So you have the two bases. This base over here is 2. This base over here is 5. The bases, remember, are the sides that are parallel to each other. And the easy way to remember it, at least for me, is it's the average of the bases times the height. So I'm going to average 2 and 5. And then I'm going to multiply by the height. The height is the distance between the two bases, which in this case is 3 units. So I have here... Three and a half times three, which is ten and a half. Okay? So question, what does the integral from zero to three of x plus two dx equal? Ten, ten and a half. Yep. Okay. And it even works if it's not if it's not straight lines here. Here we have the square root of 4 minus x squared. And we're going to take the integral from negative 2 to 2. Well, what do we have when we graph that? Half a circle. What's the area of half a circle? Yeah, the area is pi r squared over 2. Well, what's our radius here? Two. two. Okay, r equals two. So, 
That means we have pi times 2 squared over 2, which is just a 2 pi. So what's the integral from negative 2 to 2 of the square root of 4 minus x squared dx equal? 2 pi. It equals 2 pi. OK? So this isn't hard, OK? If you have stuff that graphs out to some kind of a geometrical shape that you recognize, you can go ahead and use geometry, use some kind of a formula to just find the area. You don't have to use calculus, OK? Even though you're doing calculus. So this is where that area addition postulate comes into play. Here's another shape. We could cut this into a trapezoid and a rectangle, or maybe a trapezoid and a rectangle that way, or maybe two rectangles and a triangle that way. Okay? We could cut this up any way we want, and we get the area. So that gives us, takes us to this. If f is integrable on three closed intervals determined by a, b, and c, and those intervals would be a to b, a to c, and also b to c, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals the integral from a to c of f of x dx plus the integral from c to b of f of x dx. And a great example of this is if we're trying to integrate with an absolute value. Okay? So absolute value of x, real quick here, we have this. Okay? If I wanted to integrate from negative 1 to 1, I can simply find the area of both of these triangles and add them together. So from a calculus standpoint, what I'm doing here is I'm integrating from negative 1 to 0 of the absolute value of x dx, and then I'm adding to it the integral from 0 to 1 of the absolute value of x dx. Each of those triangles is a half a, half a square unit, and my total area ends up equaling 1. Okay? Okay. But you'll notice here, I could break it up into two separate parts and simply add the integrals together by splitting the interval into two parts. Okay? That's it. All right? We'll see you guys. Have a great day.